Hello, I'm Will. This is Mike. We're the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And today we've got for you issue 51 of uh, Warhammer Age of Sigma Mortal Realms magazine. This issue came with a Lord Ordinator miniature for the Stormcast Eternals. And if you'd like to see him in action in the battle report, you can use the chapter bar or the time code in the description to skip ahead. But we'll have a look inside this issue. First up we have the background for the Lord Ordinator. These are, as it says, part prophet and part engineer. So they're chosen for their intelligence or their skill at building and scrying because they are expert builders but also have skills in telling the future. And they often fight with the Stormcast Eternals and also oversee the building of new cities of Sigmar. And there's a bit more on the back about how they predict the future and allow Sigmar's armies to respond to various occurrences. Then we have a section on Hailstorm Battery. This is a specialised formation of Stormcast Eternals led by a Lord Ordinator. It includes Castigators, and it also includes a Celestar Ballista, and they particularly come into their own when defending against a siege when positioned on walls. Then we have some more about the forces of Chaos, the Bray Herds. We've seen the beasts of Chaos before, the sort of hybrids of beast and man who have a hatred for all things civilised. And this is, this is just a bit more detail about them. There's different types like the Ungors and the Gors, and the largest of them, the Best Gors. And on the back, uh, Beast Lords and the Great Bray Shamans who lead them on their rampages. Now we have the build guide for the Lord Ordinator. He's a single pose model and he comes in nine components. It's fairly easy to put together. They actually suggest here you clip out the head and leave part of the sprue intact. So you can paint the head separately on the sprue. That's what it suggests doing the painting guide. And uh, there's the step by step instructions. And then the painting guide is just the same as all the other Stormcasts we've had so far, so all the various stages, but again, they do suggest you keep the head separate and undercoat it separately to make the skin a bit easier to paint. There's some more bits here. The only real difference between him and most of the rest of the Stormcasts is he has a sort of quilted leather tabard, like the Star Star Ballista Crewman, which is painted with Reclorn Red. And then, yeah, the usual shades and highlights and some of the details specific to him, like his instruments. And there he is finished, looking pretty good. So that's it for our look at the magazine. We'll have a look at the rules for him now and then get onto the battle. So as you might expect, before we get into our game, we need to look at the war scroll for our new Lord Ordinator. So he's got a similar profile to other Stormcast characters. Uh, he only has a 4 plus save, he's so not quite as well armoured. You can see he's got his Astral Hammers, with which he has 6 attacks that hit on 4s and wound on 3s, with no render and 1 damage. And for his abilities, he has Arcane Engineer, which gives uh, friendly order war machines, so not necessarily Stormcast ones, that are wholly within 9 of him, plus 1 to hit. He also has Meteoric Slam, where if he rolls two or more sixes to hit when attacking an enemy unit, uh, that unit will suffer D3 mortal wounds in addition to any damage he deals with his attacks after you roll for his actual attacks. Then he has a command ability, which is used in the Battleshock phase. If you use it, friendly units wholly within 18 inches of him don't have to take Battleshock tests. So it's basically a really powerful version of the uh, Stand Your Ground or something like that, whatever it's called. And over on the next page, it just goes over some explanations on how these abilities are used. So in the last issue we learned about the Execution Ward War Scroll Battalion for the Nahal, but now we have one for the Stormcast. We have the Hailstorm Battery. You can see it's made up of a Lord Ordinator, a unit of Cascaders and a Celestar Ballista. And the benefit here is that they gain the Hailstorm Strike ability. So what this does is if the Castigators in the Battalion cause some wounds to an enemy unit, then if the Ballista attacks that unit, uh, it can reroll failed hit rolls. Uh, so technically this will also apply in melee, but I imagine it's most useful for shooting. It gives it a pretty significant benefit. And again on the next page it shows how the Hellstorm Trike ability works, and also shows how it stacks with Arcane Engineer, so you be hitting on fours and you can reroll failed hits. So now getting into our game, we have the backstory here. So Lord Ordinator Sturmfell has come from Azir to uh, the Sigjorn on the Realm of Metal and he's brought uh, chests of supplies and he's laying down the foundations for a bastion for which the Stormcast Eternals can use to weather the Nighthaunt assault, but a Lord Executioner has arrived with a force of Nighthaunt to try and stop him. So we have our battle plan hold fast, so we'll go over the armies first. For the Night Haunt we have uh, exactly the same army as the previous issue, where we have an Execution Horde with the Lord Executioner and three units of one Spirit Host, ten Chain Rosts and a Dreadblade Harrow. Well, for the Stormcast we have a Hailstorm Battery, so that's the Lord Ordinator, a unit of three Castigators and a Celestar Ballista, and also four Liberators. Have a quick look at the board, you can see we have our three boards set up. In the middle we have Stormcast Territory, which is a 12 inch diameter circle around the center. For Nighthaunt Territory we have two triangles splitting the board in half on opposite ends. Setup is a little bit uh, different to what we're used to, so the Stormcast player sets up both of the Azurite runes in their territory. 
And then the Beam Hunt player sets up the Sigmite runes, which we got in the last issue, the Azurak Bell Tower, the Dominion of Sigmar statue, and the Fallen Sigmar statue anywhere outside the Stormcast territory. It says here that terrain may not be set up within six inches of the objective. We're going to assume that that only applies to the Nighthawk player, because otherwise the Stormcast player can't actually fit the terrain in their deployment zone. We alternate setting up forces, starting with the Nighthawk player. The game will last for four battle rounds, and uh, whoever has the most victory points at the end wins, and uh, the same number of victory points is a tie. So to score victory points, it says at the end of every turn, um, well, I'll explain it first, but we're a little bit unsure about this. Uh, the Stormcast player scores a victory point if the Lord Ordinator controls the objective, and uh, we'll be going by the core rules for holding objectives, so it's whoever has the most models within six controls the objective. And the Nihilhawk player gains a victory point for each Stormcast Eternals unit that is slain. The bit we're unsure about is that it says at the end of every turn, the Stormcast player gains a victory point. Not sure whether that's meant to mean every one of their turns, or every other turn, because effectively they'll get four victory points after two back battle rounds, effectively, and the game will basically become unwinnable for that one. So we're not too sure. We'll see how it looks after we set up, how we're going to do it, and I'll come back and explain it. But uh, other than that, we'll uh, set up the board and deploy our armies, and come back when we've done that. So I'll show you the uh, leftmost and middle boards first. We have the train set up. We have the uh, Fallen Sigma statue here. And uh, we roll off on the table for uh, that and the statue. And um, the Fallen Sigma statue is arcane, but there's no wizards on the battlefield. Set so up the Sigmite ruins over on the top left there. In the middle, we have the Azurite ruins. And we'll go with the Stormcast deployment as well. We have the uh, Lord Ordinator in the middle, near the objective. The four Liberators on the lower level. On the upper level, we have the three Castigators on the left and the Solar Star Blister on the right. And over on the right hand board we have the uh, Statue of Sigmar which is deadly so it can potentially cause mortal wounds to things that come near it and then the Azerite Bell Tower there and over on my right hand territory I have the Dreadblade Harrow and the Spirit Host and in my left hand territory I have the other two Spirit Hosts, the Lord Executioner and the Chain Rasps so you can see them in relation to the Stormcast so for battle round one we'll be rolling off and uh, we are going to go with the scoring victory points how it says in the magazine since i do start fairly close i think it is doable so the stormcast player will score every turn if the lord ordinator controls the objective we also both start with one command point each because we both have a war score of a time we're rolling off to see who goes first i got a three one uh, i'm going to go first because otherwise i'll probably get shredded by the ballista so in my hero phase I gain a command point and uh, I should have said earlier but the Lord Executioner is my general. I'll start down here. The chain rolls are moved up normally. We're going to try and make a very long charge to try and get some bodies on the objective because otherwise the Stormcast are going to start getting points very quickly. The Spirit Host here ran and the Lord Executioner also ran but he's still within three for the purposes of lookout sir. And over on the other side the uh, Dreadblade Harrows moved up normally and the Spirit Host with him ran. On to the charge phase uh, where I'll start with the Dreadblade Harrow. So he's going to need at least a five to get up onto that outcropping and fight the blister. Oh, he gets a double one, so it's a good start. I'll have to spend a command point to reroll that. Into a five, so he got the minimum. So that gets him balanced precariously on that uh, outcropping on that rune. And then the chain rafts are going to charge. This is going to need to be a very good roll. Probably about a ten to get in contact with the liberators. And he's something impressive. Not a four, so he's my other last command point to reroll that as well. To get an 11. So the channels have finished their charge and um, we took the ruin away to make it easy to see. So the Dread Warden is the, uh, the model that ended up within half an inch of the Prime. And then as it stands, we've got a cluster of chain rust over here and then the ruin goes like that. So in the end, I think these two are within an inch of this Liberator. And then over here, there'll be some piling and we can probably get most of these guys in range of a Liberator. So we can move on to the combat phase where I'll pick the chain rafts to go first because we uh, need to start killing those liberators to reduce the number of moles on the objective. So I've finished piling in the chain rafts and uh, all of them can fight apart from these two out here. And this one here, the liberator prime is just slightly too far away from the wall. So that'll be uh, seven in total, including the dread one. So there's 15 attacks from the chain rafts, hitting on fours. Uh, nine hits, wounding on fours. Uh, only getting three. Three, four plus saves, re-rolling ones. Don't get any benefit to cover from obstacles in melee. So we roll one. Interesting success, so we take one wound. And I'll put the wound on the one who's under there. Then I get to pick. I suppose I'll pick the ballista, because the chain rails have already attacked. I'll pile this crew member this way ever so slightly, just to make sure we're definitely not within three inches of a chain rasp, in case that comes up in later rounds. And then four attacks on the Dreadblade Harrow, the whole thing counts as one model, hitting on fours. Threes, oh. because the uh, Lord Ordinator affects oh, yeah. it in melee as well. Quite right, so we've got two hits. Winning on fours. Oh, we did. Four plus save for Dreadblade. Made one, third one, down to four wounds. So Dreadblade goes down to four wounds, and then he's my only pick left, so he'll attack the Blister. 
So he has three attacks because he charged, hitting on threes, getting two, wounding on threes, getting one. Ballista has plus two to its save when it's in cover rather than plus one, so this is a three plus save when the rend is considered, which I've made. Now, unfortunately this is a mistake, uh, actually the extra save benefit only applies against missile weapons, so we shouldn't have been adding plus two to the save here, just plus one for cover as normal. We continue to do this throughout the rest of the game, but fortunately if you actually keep close track of the dice rolls it doesn't make any difference to what happens. But every time it does happen we'll just put a little caption up so you can see what the actual save score required was at that point. And then two attacks on the horse, they hit on fours, getting a hit. Wounded on fives, not getting any wounds. And then the liberators get to go pile in the prime slightly and then this one I should be able to get in an inch. So they're all within an inch. So nine attacks hitting on fours, six hits, and wounding on threes, just three. Five plus saves for thin rasps, save one, so that's two dead. Now I'll just take away these two over here. The Cascaders are actually within three inches of the Tainerous, technically, base to base, but um, they can't pile down and fight, yeah. so they just stay there. But yeah, that'll be the end of the combat phase, so we'll be on to the Bashrock phase where nothing happens, no Bashrock tests need to be made, and at the end of the turn we need to count how many models are within six of the objective. So, I have eight models on the objective, and there are, what, five Stormcast? Six, maybe, from one of the Cascaders, because the Cascaders aren't... Their base has to be wholly within six inches of the objective to count, and uh, some of them aren't. And the Ballista's too far away as well, so I actually end up having more models on the objective. I could pile the Cascaders in that way, actually, even though they can't fight, and I would be able to get all of them on the objective, but I would only be able to get eight models total, which isn't enough to control the objective, mm. which is what I need, so I'm not going to... Well, that'll be the end for the first turn. No uh, victory point for the Stormcast as we head into Stormcast turn one. So I gain a command point in the hero phase and in the movement phase, well, there's not really going to be any movement. I've just moved the Lord Alternator ever so slightly that way to the left, as you see, uh, just to try and block off the Night Ward a little bit more around the back. And yeah, and then we're on to the shooting phase. Both of my shooting units are engaged, so the Cascaders have to shoot the Chain Rasp and the Ballista has to shoot the Dreadblade Arrow. So we do the Cascaders first. Uh, they can all see a chain rasp, we'll do power to accuracy to reroll ones, the prime hits on a two, the others on threes. We have all three hit, no sixes, and threes to wound, we have all three again. Five plus saves for chain rasps, made one, fell two, so two die. Now uh, we'll take away these two just to make keeping them cohesion easier for me. <laughs> then the ballista gets to shoot. So we do the four shot profile, we've got four shots hitting on fours because the Lord Ordinator gives it plus one to hit, while well, it's only within nine. So two hits, although actually the fours did the, the plus one didn't help. These are both d6 hits, six, and wounding on threes, uh, three. Four plus save for the dreadblade. Made none of them, so he's down to one wound. And then we're on to the combat phase. Yep, where I think we'll do the um, liberators first. Um, so the, the wounded one under here can't get within an inch to fight, so we've just got three of them. Seven attacks hitting on fours, uh, three hits, wounding on threes. Two wounds. Five plus save. Fail both. So I'll take away these two at the end. I'll pick the Dreadblade to go next before he gets killed by the Blister crew. So now he has four attacks because he didn't charge. Hitting on threes, getting one. That wound's on a three. It does. Three plus save because cover and rend made it. And two attacks on the horse, hitting on fours, getting one. And fives to wounds, getting one. Two plus save because of cover. Yeah. Yeah, and then the Blister will fight back. Four attacks hitting on threes, thanks to the Lord Ordinator. Well, they all hit, even, with, even without that. Wounding on fours. Oh, just one. And he's only got one wound left. Four plus save to live. He made it. Finding the chain to get to go, and I uh, don't think I'm going to be able to pile them in to get the last guy in range, so we're only going to get three of them, including the Dread Warden, attacking the Liberators. Seven attacks hitting on fours. Getting three. And wounding on fours. Getting one. Four plus save. Rerolling ones. Rerolling ones. Oh, still a one. So you kill one. So man under here dies. Huzzah. And yeah, that'll be it. So oh, no bash rock test needed to be made. So I only have the four chain rasps in range, while the uh, three remaining liberators, the Lord Ordinator, and the Cascader Prime are all in range of the objective. So the Stormcast will score a victory point. So at the end of battle round one, the Stormcaster a victory point ahead, and with two command points to my zero, and we'll be rolling off for battle round two. I got a six. I didn't. Uh, I'm going to go first again. Yeah, I need to be able to charge in and take the initiative. 
So before I explain my movement, we did realise actually um, before we were checking for models wholly within six of the objective, but it's actually within six, but uh, luckily the victory points will remain the same. So for my movement, the uh, chain is going to stay in combat. The spirit host and the Lord Executioner are going to move up down here. The spirit host is going to move up to get closer to the castigators. Uh, the spirit host that was with the dreadblade has moved up to the base of the ruin to take the dreadblade's place because he has retreated to the opposite side of the ruin, be near the Lord Ordinator and also be within six of the objective. So obviously I have no shading so it'll be on to charges where I will start with this spirit host over here. So it's going to need at least a three to get up, a five is enough. So that gets it into combat with the ballista balanced where the dreadblade was. Uh, next up I'll do this spirit host down here that's with the Lord Executioner. So for that spirit host, its charge is a seven. That's probably enough to get him where I want him to go. So that is enough to get that spirit host up there, balanced precariously on the ruin. And for stage three of Operation Balance, this spirit host is going to charge. Uh, it gets a six. That's probably enough. Now that is enough to get it on top of the ruin to fight the castigators. And uh, finally, the Lord Executioner will charge. And for his charge, he gets a seven. That's definitely enough. Yeah, and that's enough to get him within half an inch of that Liberator there. So we'll be on to the combat phase. So I'm going to pick this Spirit Host here, fighting the Castigators, because uh, it's the most likely to get killed, I think. So we have six attacks, hitting on fives. Six has caused mortal wounds. Uh, that's only a single mortal wound in there. Uh oh, I'll put a wound on the Castigator there. So we'll do the Liberators, because the Ballista will survive one Spirit Host at least. And we're going to try and kill Chain Rasps so they're all going to attack them. Seven attacks, hitting on fours. Five hits, wounding on threes. Wow, it won. Oh, blimey. Five plus save. Oh, killed this one next to the little executioner. Oh, well, I'll pick one of the spirit hosts fighting the blister. We'll go with the more well balanced one. Six attacks, hitting on five. Six has caused mortal wounds. Well, we got a mortal wound and no hits again. So the blister is down to six wounds. Well, I'll do the blister and it puts attacks on the precariously balanced spirit host that hasn't fought yet. Four attacks, hitting on threes. They all hit again, Oof. winning on fours. Oh, three. Oof. Four plus save. Made one, so it survives. Put the dice down here, so that's for that spirit host that's on one wound, and it will fight next, attacking the ballista as well. Six attacks, on five, six to do mortal wounds. Once again, we got a mortal wound and no hits. So the ballista's down to five wound. And then the castigators are all I've got left, so they'll attack their spirit host. Six attacks, winning on fours. Four hits, and winning on fours. Two, three. Four plus saves, made one again. <laughs> so that's another spirit host down to one wound. And I will pick the Lord Executioner next, because if I pick the Chain Rasp, there's a very slight chance they might kill that one Liberator he's engaged with. And he's got three attacks, only on twos, because there's a spirit host within six inches of the Liberators. Now oh, you needed it, three hits. Wounding on three, sixes are three damage. He got a six and a normal hit. And these are minus two rent, so I say yeah. on sixes, so we'll do the two damage one. Yep. Every yeah. time. Mm -hmm. And the, the one damage one. No, I didn't save that, so we take a wound. Uh, we'll wound the one he's fighting. Yeah, and then finally the chain rolls get to go. There will only be two fighting, including the dread one. Five attacks hitting on fours, getting one. That wound's on a four. It does not. Well, the Lord Holder's nature is actually within three inches of this spirit host, but there's no way for him to fight it, so he won't pile in. That'll be it, I think, for the combat phase. No battle shock tests once again. Uh, looks like I, well, I have all of my remaining models, which is eight. And I also have eight models, so yes, yeah, a tie on the yeah, end. So no victory point for the Stormcast, but we're heading to Stormcast turn two. So the only movement is that the Lord Ordinator is going to retreat, because as I said, he is within three inches of that spirit host, but he can't actually fight it, and he can only pile in closer to it, which pretty much leaves him in limbo. So yeah, he's, unfortunately he has to retreat to there and stand around doing nothing for the rest of the turn. And everyone else is going to stay in melee, because it's probably my best chance of killing Nighthawk. So on to the shooting phase. We'll start with the Castigators, I guess. Shooting the spirit host, three shots, hitting on threes or two. Pre-rolling ones. We got three hits again. Winning on threes. Uh, two. Four plus saves. Oh, made one, fell one. That's enough to kill this spirit host. Maybe. And then the ballista will shoot. Because we've got a spirit host on one wound, I think we'll put two shots into that one and two shots into the unwounded one. So the two shots into the wounded one, hitting on fours because of the Lord Ordinator. So we've got a hit, which is D3 hit, D6 hits rather, four. Wounding on threes. I'm not doing too well far, so far. Oh, only one wound. Oh, four plus save. Made it. That's going to be important. And two shots of the other one hitting on fours. Well, they both hit. D6 each. Only five. 
We're in on threes. Four. Four plus save. Made three. In the charge phase, ironically, I could have charged with the Lord Ordinator because the guy he was in melee with got killed. But anyway, it's too late now. So onto the combat phase where the Liberators will go. These two will attack the Chain Rasp. This one has to attack the Lord Executioner. Can't get near a Chain Rasp. Who attacks on the Chain Rasp? We've got five hitting on fours. Four hits. Winning on threes. Three. Five plus saves. Oh, fell them all, so that's all the Chain Rasp gone. And our attacks on the Lord Executioner. Hitting on fours because we get plus one to hit him because he's got more than five or more wounds, but minus one because of the uh, War Scroll Battalion, the Spirit Host, so oh, it doesn't matter anyway. One hit. Wounds on three. Yes. Four plus save. Nope. Down to four wounds. I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick this uh, Spirit Host with one wound remaining. Six attacks. Hitting on five. Sixes scores more wounds. There's two sixes this time. So, that's, so the Blister's down to three wounds. And then the Ballista will attack the one with two wounds left, because it's still to attack. Four attacks hitting on threes. Uh, two hits. Wounding on fours. One. Four plus save. Saved as well. Still on two wounds. I'll do that Spirit Host next. Uh, six attacks hitting on five. Six has two more wounds. Nothing at all. And then the only model I have remaining is the Lord Executioner. Three attacks hitting on twos, because the Spirit Host is nearby. Yeah, still needed that. Still needed it, because he rolled a two. Three hits, wounding on threes. Sixes are three damage. Well, it's yeah. a six and two wounds. That's probably the best he's ever rolled. So we'll do the two damage. I need a six. Three damage, sorry. Oh, yes, three damage. I did not, so it does... Three damage does go through. Huzzah! And then the normal one. Sixes, three rolling ones. We've got a one. No, get in the box. No. So that's actually five wounds total go through. Huzzah! Yeah. Which is exactly how many wounds they have left. That's five wins worth of Liberators, which is what there is, because this one here was wounded. And that actually earns me a victory point, because a Stormcast unit has been destroyed. End of the battle round, I got my victory point for killing the Liberators, but then the Stormcast gained a victory point, because they are five models, including the Lord Ordinator, whereas I only have four. So, start of battle round three, we're rolling off. Oh, I only got one. So, I think the Stormcast will go first. Uh, so, well, I gained command point. I got three, I haven't actually used any. The Lord Ordinator isn't going to move because he's already within three inches of the, just over three inches away from the Dreadblade Harrow, and the missile units will stay where they are. Mm -hmm. So onto the shooting phase, where the Castigators will shoot at this Spirit Host on two wounds over here. Mm -hmm. See if we can you make use of the Hailstorm battery. Three shots hitting on twos or threes, re-rolling ones. Sixes are D3 hits. Re-roll one for the Prime. Into a hit, so just three. Wounding on threes, two. Four plus saves. Made both. And then the Ballista will split its shots again, two on each Spirit Host. And we don't get the benefit from the Hailstorm battery because it didn't actually wound that one with the Castigators. So two shots on the one-on-one -on -one wound, on fours. They both hit. They are D6. They are ten. Wounding on threes. Eight. Going to make all of these saves. No. So that Spirit Host dies. Then on the other one, two shots on fours. Oh, they both miss. And I can't re-roll them because it didn't wound it. Then in the charge phase, the Lord Ordinator will declare a charge. Oh, he needs to re-roll that. That's a two. Yeah. Fortunately, I have three command points to use. Right, that's better. So he's going to go over here and try and kill the Dreadblade Harrow, who's on one wound. Mm. Uh, but in the fight phase, I'll do the Ballista first, because the Spirit Host could kill it. Four attacks hitting on threes. Mm, two wounds. Oh, sorry, only two hits. Wounding on threes. Fours. Oh, fours, yeah, sorry. I don't know why I said threes. One wound. Four plus save. Make it again. So I'm going to pick the Dreadblade Harrow, see if you can put some wounds on the... Uh... Lord Ordinator. Four attacks because we didn't charge, hitting on threes, getting one again, hitting on threes, getting one. Five plus save because he only has a four plus base, which he failed, so he's down to four wounds. Yeah, and we got two attacks on the horse, hitting on fours, getting one hit, and wounding on fives. Ooh, not a wound. And that leaves Lord Ordinator to go. So he has six attacks, hitting on fours. If he rolls two or more sixes, he does d3 mortal wounds after his attacks have been resolved. We've got one six only, but four hits total. He's wound on threes. Three. Four plus saves the Dreadblade. No, I made none of them. <laughs> so he gets cromped. And then the remaining Spirit Host gets to go. Six attacks, hitting on fives. Sixes are mortal wounds. We've got a single hit with no mortal wounds. Wounds on a four. It does. Uh, we've got a two plus save though because of the cover. Yeah, we're fine. And that'll be the end of the turn, where the Stormcast will score another victory point, because they have more moles on the objective. Yeah, I'll do my turn and uh, see if I can turn this around. Still got a chance, I think. So the only movement in my turn is to uh, move the Lord Executioner three inches away from the Lord Ordinator, and uh, in the charge phase he's going to charge. I also gain a command point, so not to two, but he's 
charge is three. <laughs> That's literally the minimum. Anyway, we're on to the combat phase where I'm going to pick the Lord Executioner to go first and he's going to attack the Lord Ordinator. And I do get the plus one to hit because that Spirit Host remaining is uh, still within six inches of the Lord Ordinator. And uh, the outcome of this attack is probably going to decide the game. So we've got three attacks hitting on twos. And we still need the plus one to hit. Getting three hits. We're only on three sixes are three damage. No threes, so... Uh... Sixes to save. None of them, so he's down to one wound. The Ballista will attack the Spirit Host. Four attacks hitting on threes. Lord Ordinator. He still can't help it with the ones and twos. And fours to wound, nothing. Oh, and then the Spirit Host gets to fight back. Six attacks hitting on five. Sixes are more wounds. Ah, uh, got nothing. And the Lord Ordinator gets to fight back. So six attacks hitting on fours, sixes, uh, lots of sixes. Well, we've got one hit overall. <laughs> That's not actually a good roll at all. Hitting on fives, actually. Oh, that's true. Actually, you can make him hit on sixes. Oh, yeah, I can give him minus one to hit, so he hits on sixes. So, actually, yeah, there's no hits. Because the uh, Lord Executioner can give here as minus one to hit. Should have said that at the start of the combat phase, but we forgot about it. Well, now it'll be the end of the turn and the battle round, where the Stormcast will get another victory point, up to four. So, at this point, I need to wipe out the remaining Stormcast to get a tie. And it's the final battle round, so... So I don't think it's possible for me to actually claw back a tie, because there's three Stormcast units remaining. If I go first, I can kill the Lord Ordinator, but now I can't kill the Castigators. And if the Stormcast go first, kill the remaining units. So I'll call that a Stormcast victory, and uh, recap that for you now. So that was the game for issue 51 of Age of Sigmar Mortals magazine. How do you think that went? I think it was actually closer than I thought. Yeah, especially after reading the uh, victory conditions, actually. You yeah. scored fewer victory points than I expected you yeah. to. We both thought before the game started that it was a very hard scenario for the Nighthorn to win. Having played it, I think we can say it's very hard for them to win in certain circumstances. Like, if I'd gone first in the first battle round... you gain a victory point. Yeah, I'd gain a victory point down, straight yeah. away, because you were nowhere near the objective. And I would have been able to shoot up your units before they got anywhere near my lines. Yeah. And I might have actually got to use the Hailstorm Battery's ability, which we'll get to in a sec. Yeah. And chances are I probably wouldn't make that charge. It was a 10-inch charge re-rolling. Chances are I probably wouldn't have made that charge on the first turn. Yeah. And if you'd gone first in the first battle round and then one roll off again... Effectively, that's three victory points you can get very quickly, and then that's as long as you get one more, you're guaranteed a tie. Yeah, I guess we'll talk about the scenario in general in a bit, but it was closer than I expected, and that was even given that you rolled pretty terribly and I rolled pretty well. All right, I suppose I rolled well for that early charge, which I probably needed to make, and uh, for saves on that one spirit host. But yeah, the dread blade rolled terribly for saves and attacks, and um, some of the spirit hosts were pretty disappointing as well. I really needed them to be doing more wounds. Oh well, actually, I think the most important role was you going winning the roll off for battle round three, because if I'd gone first, I would have charged the Lord Ordinator with both of my heroes and possibly managed to kill him that would have stopped you gaining victory points and you would have been on two and I would have been on two so it would have been at least a tie regardless of what happened yeah that's true because it was a slightly odd victory condition that required the Lord Ordinator to be I had to hold the objective and the Lord Ordinator himself had to hold the objective and that was another peculiar thing about the scenario is scoring a victory point for the Stormcast at the end of every turn I think as it was, given the game how it played out, I did sort of only just about manage to scrape enough victory points together. And again, if you roll a little bit better, you might have been able to kill another model here and there and deny me the ones I did mm. get. But if it was at the end of every battle round, I would have still got the same score I did in this game. But normally something like that would be scored at the end of the battle round rather than every single turn or even maybe at the end of the Stormcast turn only. Because it, what it meant was that uh, there was a potential eight victory points for me to get and only four for the Nighthorn. And if you mm. hadn't got on top of me straight away, yeah, I could have just racked up victory points. So not quite quite sure whether that was intended at the end of every single turn. Also the fact that we get to roll off to see who goes first. Well I suppose in the fiction it does imply that the Stormcast have already set up to receive the Nighthawk so you wouldn't necessarily assume the Nighthawk will go first. Although even then like normally in a game like this where you have one side defending a, who has the advantages of a defensible position you might expect them to have to set up first which well, I didn't so. And also the fact that you can put all your ranged units up on the buildings and still be within the range of the objective. But then it does say terrain can't be put within six inches of the objective. So maybe that's why they said that. But then you physically can't put the terrain. Because it, be, it has to be within your territory. So, well, actually, uh, having both the deployment zones was kind of useful because I was able to attack the ballista. Or it forced you to put something on that side, but you were probably going to put it up there anyway. And the other terrain largely seemed a bit pointless because... I'm not going to put it such that it impedes my movement. I can't really hide behind any of it. Yeah, it did. I think as it was, we actually got an interesting game out of it. But as I said, like if I'd gone first or something, it could have been really boring. Which is a shame, really, because it's kind of a nice idea, I think, this battle report. If you don't count the last issue where it was semi-different, it's actually the first battle plan we've had with... Yeah, it's um, completely different. Business. With It's like a completely um, non-symmetrical battle. And it certainly ended up looking thematic when all the spirit hosts got in were surrounding you. 
And the Royal Execution actually had a half decent game. He rolled a couple of sixes, even though he saved one of them, but there's a glimpse of his potential. Well, I guess we could talk about the Lord Ordinator in... Uh, I don't really see a point in taking him if you don't have any ballistas. And you know, if you have a ballista, you might as well take Cascades and take the Hailstorm Battery. He does cost points to take the Hailstorm Battery, but makes the ballista a lot better. He he just makes the ballista a real danger. Like, when it's four shots hitting on fives, it can be a bit hit and miss. We've had at least one game where it never hit anything at all. Where it's hitting on fours, that's suddenly a whole lot more dangerous. When it gets the D6 hitch, Or that's good. potentially hitting on twos with the precision shot. Yeah, exactly. And, and you get two ballistas with this magazine, he definitely fits with the army. His yeah. command ability is quite useful, but perhaps not so useful with the magazine because most of the storm cars are going to be in really small units anyway. I, if you ever have a situation where you have two units left to make badge rock tests, you can save command points. It's much more useful actually in the new third edition because you can in third edition you can only use a the same command ability once per phase, so he mm. can effectively do the work of several stand yeah. or fasts or whatever, whatever it's called. He's not super durable, unfortunately, especially against the Executioner. He, he's okay in melee against something with a relatively decent save where he does, because he doesn't have any rend, he's not going to put out a damage, but that's not what you bring him for. You bring him to maybe a few ballistas plus one to hit. And yeah, as you say, we get two ballistas. So um, if you bring him and you might as well bring two ballistas, he can help both of them out. Only and one of them can be in yeah. the Hailstrike Battery. Yeah, but... fortunately, you only get one of him. So you could, well, I mean, you could buy this issue again and then just have two Hailstorm Batteries because yeah. you do get enough Castigators. Yeah, we didn't actually get to see it go off in this game because the one time. I was able to shoot them both at the same target the castigators didn't do any wounds but I think that's the castigators fault specifically it's just I think if I were going to take this battalion myself I would probably have a larger unit of castigators because mm, just to maximise the number of wounds you yeah, get because they only need to do one wound and the more castigators you have the easier that's going to be it also its ability affects border units so I suppose if you would play something like Cities of Sigmar so yeah. he has potential use in other armies yeah he could take him as an ally and I think he is fairly good value for money issue as well because he's £22.50 because but that's usually the case with these characters when you get him break wood. And interestingly, there are two uh, Lord Ordinators available, and he's the more expensive one. The other one is only £20. Mm. But yeah, I don't think there's too much more to say about uh, this issue or this game. So yeah, if you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe. And uh, leave any comments. Uh, if you use the Hellstorm battery in your games, or if you played this game as well, let us know how it got, you got on. We've been the Total Donkeys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.